I always want you to follow your dreams. You always tell me I should follow my dreams and this is it. If you follow your passion, it will always lead to success. But I've always been a believer that if you let someone follow their passion, they'll always be successful. I shouldn't be seeing you the way I do But the way you move got me hooked I know this probably wouldn't work for you Probably end up hurting you I wouldn't even care how it looks Got me feeling guilty having desires Bittersweet like fire and ice You're like a drug and I'm just trying to get higher I keep trying to quit but what's one more time? Cause I'm an addict for making bad choices Devil on my shoulder, I've been hearing bad voices Everything we had, girl, I'm ready to destroy it Love it when it's scary With my dad, and, I and we're it, gonna I'm practice enjoy. one last time before the talent show Ready? Yeah I done seen city back that ain't like this I'm the man in Instagram, take my pig like this Oh, oh, hold on, hold on I have to take this phone call, okay, I'm sorry Okay <laughs> Yeah <laughs> wow, Galani. Don't tell me you're dancing in the talent show with your dad. <laughs> Are you really surprised? I hope everybody's having a good day. Or a good night. Let's go ahead and get into this. The Dorman universe often sets viewers up for disappointment. His focus on encouraging kids to seek the spotlight may not be the most advisable approach. <laughs> no. My favorite YouTube channel, the LeBrant fam, the daughter Everly dances in vlogs with her dad, Cole. And they're actually not losers. They're really cool. And I want a channel just like them. <laughs> you want to have a YouTube channel? And how are you ever going to get subscribers? Her only subscriber will be her dad. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let me call you back, okay? One of the issues I have with Darman is that a lot of his videos when it comes to social media, especially with the younger generation, is that he tries to give this facade that it's going to be easy to make it in the YouTube universe if your life is hard for some odd reason. So this video pretty much shows a girl who wants to be a vlogger and it doesn't work out for her. And then she ends up meeting a famous YouTuber who gives her a camera. And then somehow, some way, just because she truly believes in her dreams, her and her dad are able to get on stage and do some funky little dance. And it's obviously enough to win a whole thing. Now, once again, that's obviously just the movie thing. But what I really want to focus on is what happens after all of this. Kaylani and her dad continue to do the dance and impress the entire crowd. When they finished, the crowd goes wild and gives them a standing ovation. Based on the audience's reaction, there was no doubt who the winner of the talent show was. Kehlani picks up her camera and continues to vlog this unforgettable moment. Everyone was so excited. When Kehlani gets home, the first thing she does is edit the video and upload it onto YouTube. Now you guys can't see this as well as I have because I was able to pause and obviously zoom in. But when she runs down the stairs, guess how many views she got? 4 million views. She went from 12 subscribers to 238,000 subscribers based on a small vlog. She continues vlogging for their family channel and doing even more dances with her dad. Their views and subscribers continue to explode. And then, a few months later, Kehlani happens to run into Pink Velvet. Every day, there is at least one channel that reaches the significant milestone of 1 million subscribers on YouTube. A remarkable achievement that signifies tremendous growth and success. It's a testament to the relentless efforts, creativity, and dedication that content creators put into their channels. These channels have captivated audiences, built loyal communities, and established themselves as notable figures within their respective niches. 
Their journey to 1 million subscribers is often marked by consistent uploads, engaging content, and a strategic approach to the audience engagement. In stark contrast, countless other aspiring creators face the disheartening reality of failing to reach even a thousand subscribers. The harsh truth is that YouTube is a fiercely competitive platform where creators must navigate a saturated market and constantly adapt to the changing algorithms and viewer preferences. Many channels struggle to gain traction despite investing significant time and effort into creating content. Factors such as lack of visibility, inconsistent posting schedules, and ineffective promotional strategies can contribute to their inability to build a substantial following. Me, you could even be our friend and we could all hang out together. <laughs> wow. Uh... That's okay. I already have the one friend I need. But thanks, though. She's the coolest girl I know. Yeah, seriously. Whatever, let's just go. She's my best friend. You mess with her, you mess with me. You mess with me, you mess with her. You mess with us, you mess with her. Okay, so you see how it ends. Obviously, she gets a million subs and all that stuff. But before we continue on to this next video, let me say this. The unrealistic expectations set by Dharma's universe can lead to feelings of inadequacy, discouragement, and even depression when viewers fail to achieve similar levels of success. Instead of fostering a growth mindset that encourages individuals to learn from their failures and work towards continuous improvement, Darman's messaging perpetuates a culture of instant gratification and instant success, which is not reflective of the real world. It's just unrealistic to think that you're going to post a random vlog and then get 208,000 subscribers. It's unrealistic to even think you might become a professional gamer, as we're about to see right here. I'm not break that game. Honey, it's okay. If that's what he wants to do, then we should support his dreams, right? Dreams don't pay the bills, Ron. What is this, Damien? Did you just put another Xbox charge on my credit card? I'm so sorry, Mom, but it's for the tournament tonight. I promise I'll pay you back. Pay me back with what? You don't even have a job. We're already $10,000 in credit card debt. We can't afford for you to put your stupid games on my credit card. Honey, it's okay. We'll figure it out. The perception of mothers who expect their children to contribute to the household expenses has dramatically changed in recent times. Today, some mothers are labeled as evil simply because they prioritize their family's financial stability over their child's desire to play video games. Let me ask you a question. How often have you come across a successful professional gamer? Not very often, right? And the answer is never for most people. And that's not a coincidence. The reality is that the vast majority of people have not had the opportunity to meet a professional gamer. And this highlights how rare it is to even meet one. So it's not a problem that the mother doesn't believe in this dream. It's normal. No, enough is enough. I'm not doing this anymore. Mom! I was in the middle of a game! You are not playing any more video games until you get a real job. But I told you, this is a job, and it's my dream. I'm one of the best players in the league. Just give me a chance, and I'll prove it to you. You are not gonna get anywhere in life by playing video games. I should have done this a long time ago. I'm taking your Xbox. No, please. I have a tournament tonight. I don't care! This is normal. He does not have a job. He says that his job is playing the game, but that's just not what's going to bring money in. We have to be careful not to let our emotions be manipulated into these false narratives. You will probably have to work at the local gas station to make ends meet until you make it. And when you get off, guess what? It's back to the grind. That's 40 hours at work and 30 to 40 hours working on your craft or working on your video game or working on building whatever you do, man. Listen, it gets boring, and yes, you will feel like a complete loser barely scraping by. That's what life is. There is a misconception that life is all about working until you can relax every day, and that's not true. Life is constant with rest days spread throughout your lifetime, but you don't fulfill your dream to simply stop working when you reach the top. Your dream should make you want to work harder. 
Of course, we already know how this video ends. He wins the tournament. He pays off his mother's bill. And he's a wealthy professional gamer. But this, once again, is a bad message for Darman to keep pushing because he never pushes working hard and then having your dreams on the side until you get there. He pushes prioritize only your dream even if there's no money coming in well guess what that's not possible for most people gluten i don't think so cut nice <laughs> oh this video is gonna be hilarious thanks to you you're a comedy genius nah it was all in your delivery <laughs> hey look out jason banks there's a new funny guy on TikTok. Okay, you keep coming up with ideas like that, I will keep delivering. All right. <laughs> but really though, why don't you want to be in any of the videos? The account is called Nelson and Kent for a reason. Yeah, I, huh, I'm more the behind the scenes guy. I don't know, I, I wouldn't mind being on camera I'm just too awkward. <laughs> but but you, on the other hand, are hilarious. <laughs> look, look, check it out. Gluten? I don't think so. <laughs> Brad and Nielsen, two aspiring TikTok stars were striving for popularity on the platform. Brad's significant success in MS popularity as a larger TikToker caught Nielsen's attention. Filled with envy, Nielsen is eventually going to want to collaborate with Brad as a potential strategy for him to gain more recognition and achieve his desired popularity. That's it. We get Brad to do a collaboration video with us. Oh. Everyone would watch it. Yeah, right. What, what makes you think he'd want to work with us? Once he sees how funny we are, there's no way he couldn't. There's only one way to find out. No, no, don't. The house will have like five bedrooms, our own bathrooms, and a jacuzzi. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Hey, Brad. Please. Right? Oh, hey, Brad. What's up? What in? Uh, what's up, Emerson? It's Nelson, actually. <laughs> it's Nelson. Okay. Do you need something? I, yeah, I, I was wondering if maybe you would like to do a collaboration video with me and. My buddy Kent, we, we do funny sketches like this one. <laughs> Gluten? I don't think so. <laughs> Once again, same narrative. 17 views, not enough. Oh, wait a minute. What about my last video? I got 7,000. Not enough. Darman's videos always push for this huge, huge jump in subscribers and views and followers so quickly. He never acknowledges that it's okay to grow over a period of time, even years, it always happens to happen in a few months. Why do you think Nelson thinks he's not growing fast enough? Because of videos that Darman pushes out. It's the same lesson we all get. Either you're making it to the top quickly or you're a failure. It is a common misconception that relying solely on others to increase our numbers or awareness will permanently improve our standing in the eyes of the audience. While temporary boosts in popularity may occur, it is ultimately the quality of our content or material that determines long-term success. If the material lacks substance, the initial boost will quickly fade, leaving us in a worse position than before. Therefore, it is essential to focus on creating compelling and engaging content that resonates with the audience, rather than rely solely on external factors for growth. And remember, it takes time to get here. Don't see a little success as a failure. Kent, Kent, you're not gonna believe it. Whoa, whoa, what? Did, did Alice and Dave finally DM you back? No, actually, I, I think she blocked me. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Look at our TikTok right now. No way. Is this real? As real as the seven octillion atoms in my body that make me do this. What? <laughs> I, I can't believe we got a video to break over 100,000 views. <laughs> We've never even gotten 10,000! I know, right? We're blowing up. Oh. I was thinking we'd go back to your place after school and you know the idea you had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we work on that one. You know? right? yes. We saw your TikTok. <laughs> that blonde wig had us rolling. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Classic. Good job. That was awesome, dude. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is this is the first time anyone at school's noticed your TikTok. I know, right? <laughs> Our TikTok. This could not be done if it weren't for your brilliant idea. Oh, thanks. You know, you're, you're the face everyone sees. Hey, hey, 
Just promise me you won't forget about me when you become all TikTok famous. And of course, he betrays Kent because he becomes TikTok famous. We already know how this story goes. He collabs with Brad. It doesn't work out. He comes back to Kent. They're friends and they end up making it as big TikTokers. I wanted to focus more on something else, though. I'm about to show you something that I think is so valuable that I think Darwin got right here. You're going to see how Nelson eventually starts pushing Kent to the forefront and praises him in front of others. And it only makes him more successful. We must learn that we grow more with the help of others. None of us have all the gifts when it comes to content creation, but you can build a team that covers the skills and talents needed to be successful. I'll give Darman the lesson on that. He does finish this video well, even though it started off horrible. And I still think he pushes a message of succeed fast. Don't grow slow. Hey, Brad. I was about to have some lunch and was wondering if you guys wanted to join me. Oh, so you actually have space for us at your table? Oh, come on, man. You know I always have room for you guys. I'm eating by myself. All my friends ditched me when my TikTok house fell through. Uh, I'm really sorry to hear that, but I think we're good. All right, well, would you want to collab sometime? I noticed your page is really taking off. Uh, I don't think so. You know, I've come to realize that people who just want to try to be your friend when it's convenient for them are not really your friends at all. So is it true? You guys are getting your own TikTok house? Wait, what? Is that why they canceled my house? Oh, um, I didn't know they canceled yours, but... Yeah, we're moving into ours next week. <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> We'd love to come over sometime. If we're invited, that is. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Great. We can't wait. <laughs> and I'm even down to hang out after school today if you don't have plans. You know, I was actually planning on hanging out with my best friend today. Aw, <laughs> okay. But what if we all went out on a double date sometime? <laughs> no, my buddy Kent here is a comedy genius. <laughs> he comes up with all of our ideas. That sounds great. What about tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow's perfect. <laughs> okay. Now, before we get into this next story with Allison, a.k.a. Harvey, a.k.a. Two-Face, Dent. Day. <laughs> I was going to cut that out, but I'm going to keep that in because I don't know why I said that. I do think she's two-faced and you'll see why. But before we get there, let me continue my thoughts on the Kent thing and we'll get on. It is a rare individual who possess all the necessary talents for successful content creation. However, by assembling a team, we can combine our diverse skills and abilities to achieve remarkable results. Darman's triumph in this instance serves as a testament to the power of teamwork and the importance of leveraging each team member's strengths. In a world where content creation has become increasingly competitive, it is essential to embrace the concept of collaboration. By recognizing our own limitations and seeking out individuals who complement our skill set, we can create content that resonates with our audience and achieves our desired outcomes. I did say collaboration, but collab with people of your skill sets, not because they're bigger than you. The lesson imparted by this story extends beyond the realm of content creation. It applies to all aspects of life and work. By understanding our strengths and weaknesses and by surrounding ourselves with individuals who possess the skills we lack, we can accomplish great things and reach our full potential. Unlike Miss Allison Two-Face Day. Let's get to it. You did amazing. Thank you. That was really cool. Honey, you did such a good job. Yeah, you did an amazing job, Al. Thanks. I'm really glad you could come. Oh, of course. That's what best friends are for. <laughs> oh my gosh, I haven't seen that in forever. It's like you two are back in high school. <laughs> well, except for one of us is a celebrity now. <laughs> Stop, you know I hate being called that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But uh, hey, I was thinking, how about all three of us go out to eat and celebrate? I'm done. Uh, hang on one second, manager stuff. Be right back. Did an amazing job. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I just want to say I'm such a huge fan of yours. Are you kidding me? I'm a huge fan of you. I love your TikToks. Really? Thank you so much. 
Oh, sorry, um, this is my friend Eric. Eric, this is Brandy Johnson. I, I know who you are, but it's nice to meet you. It's really nice to meet you, too. I like the jacket. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm gonna go ahead and catch you up on everything. If y'all saw the interview there, she's gonna talk about a football guy that she liked six years ago and he clowned her like an idiot, but he's a football guy, so it doesn't matter. But that's not the point of this story. The point of this story is that man right there. That guy's name is Eric in this one and he is the biggest embarrassment and I don't understand why Darman does this to people. Actually, hold up. photo <laughs> that night was so fun yeah. send that to me so i can story it okay right, got it what should i say hmm. throw back to an epic prom night <laughs> with my best friend oh my gosh hmm. kevin bigsby just messaged me from high school well, man, I'm not surprised. You did just mention him on national TV. I kind of bound to hear about it. What should I do? Should I open it? Well, then he know I read it. For what? If I were you, I'd just block him. No, that's me. I'm gonna read it. Whoa, are you kidding me? What? He said he had a crush on me too. Can you believe this? After all this time, we both liked each other. Hey, superstar. Just saw your interview. Guess we both had crushes on each other and never knew. How funny. We should hang out soon. <laughs> I can't believe that this is happening. And right before Valentine's Day. I hate to break it to you, Al. This doesn't feel right. What do you mean? Kevin was so mean to you in high school. Now, all of a sudden, he just has a crush on you. Don't you think that's, like, a little sus? As we can see, Two-Face Day here is going to talk about how she wants to get back with this boy and how he wasn't so mean to her. But I don't really care about her too much. I care about Eric. You're going to see this crazy scene that you're seeing now. <laughs> and uh, I want y'all to see what she says to Eric. After this entire exchange, it is sickening. <laughs> Kevin? Uh, what's up? Mm. Uh, Addison. It's Allison. <laughs> Listen, uh, I was wondering if you had asked anyone to go to prom yet? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, do you think maybe you'd like to Go with me. <laughs> you really think that Kevin would want to go to prom with you? <laughs> like, he dates nines and tens and you're a four. <laughs> oh, brutal. <laughs> hey, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, but like, maybe you should date somebody in your own league. <laughs> 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 like this dork over here? Uh, <laughs> Some loser. Uh, <laughs> oh, do you want to get a problem with me? <laughs> <sighs> I can't stand them. That was so embarrassing. Hey, don't, don't worry. Don't forget them. I can't believe he laughed at me. Now I have no one to go to prom with. Um, well, y you know, it's not too late for me to tell my mom, no? <laughs> I know I've already asked you two times. He already asked her two times. And now he's willing to ask her a third. And she ends up saying yes this time. She pretty much embarrassed this man to his face by turning him down twice after she just got embarrassed. This is where Eric is going wrong. 
because he thinks, oh, I'm getting my best friend or whatever, even though he has romantic feelings for her. She clearly doesn't have any for him. And here we are sitting at the dinner table again, and he is getting embarrassed again for this Kevin guy. He got rejected twice. She went for Kevin. Now here they are six years later. He's there for her every waking moment. And guess what? She can't even listen to the story. She's still caught up in Kevin. Wow. I actually have a date. Remember the football player I mentioned in an interview? That Kevin boy, the one from high school? Mm-hmm. He messaged after we left the studio. We talked for a bit and now we're getting dinner. Well, I guess it's fate. Wait, is he the one that you had his face on one of your pillows? Oh my gosh, mom, please don't say that out loud. <laughs> So how does Eric feel about all this? I'm sure he doesn't feel any way about it. We're just friends. Oh, come on. He obviously likes you. Even if he did, Eric's just too nice. <laughs> well, someday you'll realize that's not such a bad thing. So she goes on his day with Kevin. Obviously, he loves the spotlight because she has... 80 million TikTok followers, so he wants somebody to spotlight. But unfortunately, as we know how it goes, he gets caught with another girl who is his girlfriend. And Eric finds this out. And then this interaction that happens right here is where Two Face Day got her name. I need to talk to you. Um, it, it, okay, I'm not. I, I was at the plaza. I just, I don't even know how to explain what exactly whoa, 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 what I just saw. Eric, but, slow down. What are you talking about? Okay, you know how you've gone on a few dates with Kevin. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure you're the the only girl he's seeing. Um, you're gonna have to elaborate. Okay, so I, I was at the plaza and I saw him there with someone else. <laughs> You're joking, right? No, look. What am I looking at here? That's Kevin and another girl. That's the back of two people's heads. This could be anyone. No, look, look, at, the, look at the jacket. That's the exact one he wears. I'm sure a lot of people have the same jacket. This is definitely Kevin. No, uh, oh, okay, look, I saw them. They, they, they were holding hands, then he kissed her. They walked into a donut shop together. Are you sure? I saw it. Kevin said he was gonna hang out with his mom today. Uh, no, this, this girl was definitely not his mom. <sighs> look, Eric, it's definitely possible you thought you saw Kevin. It was probably someone else. No, I know what I saw. Why, why do you think I'd make this up? Well, it's just, I know you're super protective of me and you did not want me to see Kevin. Because I'm your best friend and I, I, I just, I want the best for you. Are you sure you're not trying to be more than just friends with me? Wait, what, what, what does that even mean? How, why would you say that? I just want to make sure you aren't trying to ruin things with Kevin because you want to have me for yourself. Wow. Tell me I'm wrong and I'll drop it. You know what? It doesn't even matter. You clearly don't believe me, so you just, you just keep doing what you're doing. I'm sure you'll figure things out eventually. Wait. Where are you going? You're right about one thing. I'm super protective over you. And, and maybe it's time I leave you alone. Because you're obviously, you're not that shy girl from high school anymore. So, 
I'm sure you're more than capable of taking care of yourself. I needed you guys to watch that full scene to feel the frustrations I had with it. It was great acting. I will admit to that. But I want to say this, and this is where we really have to focus on Eric. Now, it was very evident that even when Eric was showing some interest in her, she immediately went to this Kevin guy. And that's how Eric started acting like a simp. And you know why? Because he lacks options because he focuses purely on Allison. You guys remember my Swoozie video. This scenario is identical. He waits until the door is completely closed before mustering the courage to express his feelings. However, given that it's a Dharma video, we anticipate that there's going to be a positive outcome for him. Remember, nobody should treat you as a backup plan. It's important to let go of the idealized version of a person you've created in your mind. Seeing them as faultless and better suited for you is a misconception. Putting someone on a pedestal can lead to disappointment and heartache. You don't want to be chosen simply because you are always available. True affection and commitment should be the driving force behind a relationship, not a sense of obligation or convenience. Now, obviously, she's going to find out about the girlfriend and it's all going to get exposed here. But after all of this, her mom mentions to her about getting a Valentine's Day uh, Valentine's. And guess who she picks? She picks Eric. But I want you all to notice what she says to him that is only going to solidify my entire point about this particular video. Hey. Hi. Uh, have you seen Kevin's Instagram? No, I haven't. Why? He has even less followers than he did before we started dating. People really don't like him. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, uh, wait, <laughs> did you come all the way over here to tell me that? I don't know. I was alone. You're alone. It's Valentine's Day, so I thought maybe we could hang. Um. And not just as friends this time. Like, an actual date. Really? Wait, where's all this coming from? Well, I guess I finally realized that I should be with someone that treats me like a star. But how did she treat him? Did she treat him like he was a star? No, she always treated him like he was her best friend, but he was always second fiddle. He was second fiddle to Kevin twice. For six years, she never gave him a chance romantically. Darman's lesson right here is problematic because it perpetuates the idea that harmful behavior is ultimately rewarded. This can be damaging as it leads people to believe that there are no consequences for their actions. Now, he gets with this girl named Brandy, but ultimately, you know how this goes. He ends up leaving her. So... There's no real lesson for Allison here because she treated this man horribly and she still got him in the end. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, sometimes in life, we lose due to our own decisions. Like in the situations of romantic interest, pursuing one person while ignoring another can result in losing both opportunities. This is a common life experience. So listen here. How is this any different from Kevin? So explain to me how Allison is different from Kevin. Kevin treated Allison horribly and still got Allison at the end of the day. Had he not had a girlfriend, Allison would have been his girlfriend. So what's different between Allison doing the same thing to Eric? She treated him horribly, but still got Eric in the end. This video was supposed to be about watch who you trust, as in Kevin. In my opinion, this video turned out to be watch who you trust, as in Allison Two-Faced Kevin Day. You're gonna die. No, I'm not. I got this. I'm almost there. And. Heart. <gasps> oh, Mom. You made me die. You know you're not supposed to be playing that game. Now, give the tablet to your brother. What? Why does he get to play and I don't? Because Jaden is getting straight A's while you're barely passing. Take out your work. You're supposed to be doing it. But I still can't believe you're getting a C in English. What difference does it make? I'm not going to use any of this stuff when I'm making millions developing games. The only thing you're going to be making is $10 an hour flipping burgers. We didn't even get that deep into the video and we're already having bad lessons taught. 
The obsession with making millions has become persuasive in our society. We constantly hear the word millions thrown around, but rarely do we discuss the importance of sustainable and satisfying financial living. This harmful message sends the wrong signal that financial success is solely measured by accumulating millions of dollars. Instead of pursuing materialistic goals, individuals should focus on finding a career that aligns with their passions and provides a sense of fulfillment. Chasing millions can easily transform a passion into a monotonous job as the pursuit of financial success becomes primarily the objective. You already saw this girl. She didn't talk about, I'm going to, you know, try to make some money to help myself or do anything like that. She went straight to, I'm going to make millions. And the sad reality for most of us, that won't ever happen. Surprised to see you in here. Are you studying for tomorrow's English test too? Do you think I'm really in the computer lab after school to study for some dumb exam? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm trying to finish this Roblox game I've been working on. Why don't you just do that at home? Because my good old mother took my tablet and my laptop away. She thinks Roblox is a waste of time and I need to spend more time studying for school. So annoying. I'd die if my parents took my electronics away. <laughs> whoa, 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 what's going on in here? Ah, oh, don't tell me you play Roblox. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't just play, she builds games, genius. <laughs> yeah, right. Like anyone ever plays her games. Last time I checked, there's no Barbies in Roblox. <laughs> I'm developing an Avi dummy. Not that you know anything about that. You're the type of guy to carry around a skateboard who doesn't even know how to skate. <laughs> oh, she's clowning you, dog. <laughs> Every man. Look, not only do I know how to board, but I'm also a better game developer than you. Mm. I just finished a new game yesterday. Hmm. It's weird, because I don't recall hearing about it. No, me neither. So I wanted to show you guys really the premise of this whole video. She wants to be a game developer and she's building this thing for Ami. And eventually there's going to be this competition by this YouTuber called Creekcraft, who's going to give a thousand dollars away for the best game that's developed. You see, this already presents another challenge. She already has the fear of missing out because she feels if she doesn't win this competition, she's a loser or this will vindicate her and she's going to, you know, live that life to be a millionaire. See, FOMO, or the fear of missing out, arises from the belief that many individuals are making millions while living their aspirations. However, the reality is quite different, as most people live without financial stability. In contrast to Dharma's perspective, which promotes procrastination and selective focus on one endeavor, the truth is, is that success often requires dedication and consistency across multiple areas of life. She could be focusing on getting her grades up in English, and getting her grades up in other classes so she can live her dream. But instead of doing that, she wants to focus on purely doing the Roblox thing. I just think you can do both. That's okay. That's how you get your dreams to be what they are. You work hard in other areas to make your dream possible. This is your last chance to get a game in if you uh, want to enter. Mute it so I don't get distracted. I'll just keep it simple. Time's about to run point. out. I know, I I'm almost point. done. Just a few more seconds in. <sighs> there. Finished. Let's hope I win. Wait, what if your mom comes home and sees? It's fine. My parents aren't gonna be here for at least- Hey guys, we're home early. We thought we would- Hey, where did you get those? Did you go in my room? I- I cannot believe you. I am taking both of no. these- Mom, please, you don't understand. I'm about to be in this competition for Roblox? No, I do not want to hear anything about that game ever. I should have thrown these away before. Stop. You don't understand how important this is. Oh, what's all this yelling about? I'm in a competition that's about to happen and mom's trying to take my electronics away. Which she shouldn't have in the first place. Dad, I just need a few minutes and I might win a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars? Oh yeah, right. She's gonna win a thousand dollars on some silly game but she certainly knows how to waste money. She's telling the truth. First place gets $1,000. And I honestly think Harley has a good shot. See? Please, Dad, tell Mom to let me play. You always tell me I should follow my dreams, and this is it. Don't try to get your father on your side. She has a C in English. There's no way we're giving her her electronics back. OK, just hear me out. Why don't we just give her, like, 30 minutes, see how this competition pans out, and if she wins, maybe this is a future for her, and we'll support her. Now, if she loses... Uh, we're throwing away the laptop and the tablet. 
So she loses this competition to that bully you saw earlier named Matt. And then, you know, she gets really discouraged. Her friend says, hey, what if we try, you know, talking to Creekcraft and see if that works for us? And then she gets this heartfelt message from Creekcraft to tell her to keep pursuing her dreams. Wait a minute. Are you the same Harley XO that was in the, the competition yesterday? I, I gotta say, Harley, your game came this close to winning. It was so hard picking a winner just because yours was, was so good. <laughs> see, I told you. She was just thinking about giving up on developing games. What? No, no, don't do that. You're, you're so talented. Why are you thinking about giving up? I don't know. It just feels like everyone around me doesn't want me to. Other than my best friend and my little brother. Some of the kids at school were even making fun of me. It just sucks. Yeah, I hear you. People can be really mean on the internet. I, I, I get trolls all the time. I, I guess I'm kind of used to it. Wait, you get trolled? But you're Creek Craft. Yeah, I know, but... It's something I've learned as a streamer is whenever you're doing something big or, or special, there's always going to be someone there that's going to try and tear you down. L l let me ask you this. If you could do one thing with your life, what, what would you want to do? Definitely develop Roblox games. Or any game, really. So would you say that's what you're most passionate about? Well, I, I think there's no way you should give up then. If this is what you're passionate about, this is what you want to do with your life, then you should definitely follow your dreams here. Uh, of course, it's going to be a bumpy road, but you'll get there in the end. I can promise you that. Thank you, Creekcraft. You have no idea how much this means to me. You're welcome. And to be honest, from what I saw, you've got a you got a great game here. You've got a lot of potential. I think we just need to have a little bit more of a unique twist on it, a little bit more of a unique spin, give it a little bit more color, a little bit more polish, make it feel like that Harley XO game. Make it stand out from the rest. And who knows? Maybe I'll be able to check it out again on a future live stream. Thank you again. I will never forget this. Yeah, of course. Good luck. All right. Let's see who's next. I wholeheartedly agree with the message of perseverance leading to success. But what does it mean to be genuinely passionate about something? I believe true passion involves more than merely complaining about challenges. It is about channeling your energy into hard work and dedication, even when faced with obstacles. That's the essence of passion. It drives you to make sacrifices such as losing sleep, working harder at your job, and prioritizing your health because you know these actions contribute to pursuing your passion more effectively. I would highly suggest watching the interview with Terry Crews and Shannon Sharp. Crews discuss how regular gym workouts, eliminating bad habits, inconsistently striving for personal growth beyond acting have contributed to his longevity and well-being. I know I'm being redundant here, but it's the same concept. Work harder in other areas of your life that are not just your passion and you will see your passion grow even more because of the infrastructure you will create with all the other disciplines you have. At least I'm still better developing Roblox games. Oh, yeah? If that's true, then why is Harley's game number one on the up and coming list? No. I don't see your game on here, do you? <laughs> nope. That's what I thought. We no. showed him. Oh, bro. Come on, yeah. man. Hi. Hey, Mom. Hey. How was school? Good. And actually, I have a surprise for you. Oh. Is it the money to pay back the credit card? I know, news travels fast, and I have heard that your game is doing very well. You're right. I am paying you back with interest. Oh. <laughs> but that's actually not the surprise I was talking about. I got my B plus on my essay. Oh. Can you believe it? Wow. I am so impressed. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> But the deal was A minus to get your electronics back. Actually, I don't need my tablet or laptop back. From you at least. Because I got my own. <laughs> Once again, the unrealistic timeline and constant emphasis on financial success when discussing pursuing a passion are problematic. The only lesson gleaned is to persist for monetary gain, which is an incomplete and potentially misleading message. And I want you to go back and watch that part with the skateboarder guy because she didn't encourage him. She didn't say, hey, man, you can do better if you keep working on it. Nope. She's dead set on being petty and embarrassing him. Once again, guys, I just don't understand what his lessons are really supposed to be pushing us towards, except for if you don't make money or gain a substantial amount of followers and subs, you're a failure.
Mandy, remember that dance routine we practiced? I think it would be fun to record it for TikTok. Let's try it. No, Mom. I'm in the middle of building something. Look, it's a spaceship. Oh, that's nice, honey, but you can play after. Let's record the dance first. Please, do it for me. Oh, fine. Oh, sweetie, we're gonna have to find you a better outfit. Why? This is my favorite shirt. I want you to look as cute as possible. It'll help get more views. I'll just go inside and grab- I don't want to change. I just want to get this over with. Fine. But next time, I'm picking your outfit. Ready? Yes. Great. Don't forget to smile. In three, two... So this story is about a young child who gets exploited by her mom because her mom wants to make millions once again on TikTok, but the child doesn't want to do that. The father agrees, so he tells the child... Wait, well, he didn't tell the child. He tells the mom that she should let the daughter pursue her passions. Aw. Having fun, Mandy? No. Mom's making me do it. I just want to play. Stop. She loves it. I don't know. Why don't you just let her do what she's more interested in? And where's playing with Legos going to get her? With TikTok, she can actually be successful. Even at her age. Do you know there's kids out there who've become millionaires from doing little dances like this? That may be true, but I've always been a believer that if you let someone follow their passion, they'll always be successful. While it is commonly believed that following one's passion leads to success, this notion is not always accurate. Pursuing a passion does not always guarantee financial success or widespread recognition. In fact, many individuals who dedicate themselves to their passion may never achieve significant monetary gain or public acclaim. Just like we heard earlier, it's about being a millionaire. It's always about being a millionaire, man. That's just crazy. Darman only thinks in millions. The essence of a passion lies in intrinsic value rather than external rewards. It is driven by personal fulfillment and a deep sense of joy. Engaging in activities that align with one's passions can provide a sense of purpose and contribute to the overall well-being. Mandy, you won't believe this. Our little dance video got 100,000 views. People are leaving so many comments. Plus, we just broke 20,000 followers. Didn't you hear me? People love you, honey. That's cool. I can't believe you aren't more excited about this. If it was me, I'd be thrilled. Then maybe you should dance in the next video, Mom. You know, if I could, I would. But you're the cute dancer here, sweetie. You're the star. Speaking of which, we need to record another dance. Oh, Mom, do I have to? I'm in the middle of this. Oh, not this again. You see how popular our last TikTok was? We need to make more now for your fans. Fans? Yes. You have fans now, and we don't want to let them down. So, let's do another dance. Mom, I told you, I don't want to be a dancer. But sweetie, this could be your future. Our future. I already know what my future is going to be. I want to build things. Maybe I'll be an engineer. Oh, honey, you're too young to know what you want to do when you get older. It's rare to be this successful at something so quickly, so... Let's take advantage of this, okay? I'm going to take this, but I'll give it back to you after we're done recording. Be careful with that. It took me hours to build. Hours? Perhaps you're wasting way too much time on this. If you spent that time making TikToks, then we could actually- <gasps> Mom, you ruined it! How could you? I I'm sorry, it was an accident. But now that that's out of the way, we can focus more on dancing. I wanted you to get the full essence of that entire scene. And did you notice that the mom said it's rare to be this successful this quickly? <laughs> what have I been saying the entire video? My gosh. So I want to reference the young girls becoming millionaires on TikTok as a common occurrence. Now, that's misleading. While certain individuals may have achieved financial success through social media platforms, 
Such instances are rare and not a representative of the majority of users. It is essential to recognize that making a million dollars from any occupation, let alone social media, is a challenging endeavor. Darman's statement reflects a lack of understanding regarding the rarity of achieving million dollar earnings from social media. This misconception can have detrimental effects as it leads individuals to believe that social media offers a quick and easy path to financial freedom. However, the reality is that the vast majority of people will not attain such financial success through social media platforms. And even if they do, it normally takes quite a few years to get there. All these videos always make it seem like it always happened within a few months. It doesn't. As time goes on, the mom continues to force Mandy to record more and more videos. Regardless of how sad Mandy seems, the mom only seems concerned with her followers and dollars. As their views and followers start to climb, eventually Mandy gets picked up by some local news. The mom is over the moon in excitement thinking they're going to make it big. And there you have it. Once again, the young girl gets a million followers within a matter of weeks. While this may seem like an impressive feat, it perpetuates the harmful idea that low effort content and consistency are keys to social media success. It is concerning that the younger generation's aspirations seem to be limited to becoming social media stars rather than pursuing a diverse range of dreams and goals. Now, I know that this video doesn't make the girl seem like that because the girl doesn't care anything about this TikTok stuff. However, a young person who's watching this video won't care. They're going to see that success before they see the girl not liking it. This video is only still pushing the same ideals. Now, obviously, the mom gets exposed for making her daughter do this, as y'all saw in that earlier clip. And then she decides to delete her TikTok and lets the little girl go ahead and pursue this career of being a Lego builder. And I love this part of the video because it does show that social media isn't the only answer. You can build Legos. You can be a CEO of another business. You could be a fast food restaurant manager. It doesn't really matter. You can pursue other things in life. And I'm glad that in at least in this video, it shows a different revenue and a different outlet. And by the way, she does get into college, but she doesn't get into college like making millions of dollars. She gets on a scholarship and that's normal. That's something you can pursue. That's something you can go for. And so I do love this message that you can achieve things without having to be a huge social media star. Well, any calls yet? No, sorry, Daisy. We used to be getting calls all day every day we haven't had a call in weeks a call hello thank you for calling daisy's interior design services what's the interest rate on my mortgage oh. Oh. telemarketer of course uh, daisy yeah. sorry i know the timing isn't the best but the landlord came by he said we're 30 days past due Great. We are not going to be able to keep our doors open much longer at this rate. Don't worry, Daisy. Great news. I have a new marketing idea. Oh, please don't tell me. So, we go back and we do things the old-fashioned way. We take out a full-page ad in the newspaper. Well, she gets embarrassed by trying to do that newspaper thing. And guess what? They don't decide to go the conventional route. They don't even decide to go with somebody who has years of experience in marketing designs for office. Nope. They decide to go with somebody even better. Can you guess who? Hey, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and I can't wait to work. <laughs> oh, please tell me this is some kind of a joke. How is this 15-year-old high school talk tick star going to solve all of our problems, hmm? I'm actually 20, and I have a lot of experience in marketing. You see, <laughs> I... You have a lot of experience in marketing. Darling, you're just a child. 
you probably just learned how to tie your own shoes. I, on the other hand, have over 20 years of marketing experience. And that is what we need, not some kid. Barb, how could you say that to her? What? I'm just telling it like it is. You remember, old is gold. We need to put a full page ad in the newspaper. Old is gold and new is what to do. Listen, I get what this video is trying to do, but what it fails to really do is show that even a room full of experts in interior design for offices can't even compare to a 20 year old social media star. Listen, posting skits on camera does not equate to marketing expertise in a field that the creator has no prior experience in. The video creates a false impression that a younger audience approval renders experienced professionals obsolete. Another thing I want to talk about is look at her attire. Her attire is an attempt to convey a message of comfort and understanding of what it truly means to be an interior design. No. While it's true that young people often have a fresh and innovative ideas, the idea that they always have better ideas than experienced professionals with decades of combined experience is unrealistic. A 20 year old may have unique perspectives, but claiming that their ideas are innately superior to those who are seasoned experts is an oversimplification and does not acknowledge the value of experience and knowledge gained over time. And I also want to say this in this video, she says that she's used to being young and people judging her and she's used to it. Twice in this video, she runs off crying and almost quits because that young lady Barb says something to her. She can't even handle anybody even critiquing her. And yes, I said young lady because anybody who's in their 40s or 50s, I still see them as young because they're still younger than my parents. What are you doing? Just watch. Come here. I'm going to show design transformation. So we'll start at the empty desk, and then I'll add each decoration on one by one. Uh, can you video as I do? Oh, I get it. Sort of like a time lapse of the design process? Exactly. And then I'll post the video on TikTok and explain to people how Daisy's Design Services can help them do cute stuff like this. Wow, I love that idea. What's going on in here? Oh, um, we're creating a TikTok. Here, check it out. Pretty cool, huh? Darman's portrayal of companies as incompetent solely because they lack social media fame perpetuates a misleading narrative. While social media can be a valuable tool for career growth, it does not equate to superior experience or knowledge. Based on this, the two years that Allison has been famous makes her superior to the others. Listen, two years of social media fame should not be used as a sole measure of individuals' expertise or competence. Collaboration and open communication between companies and individuals are essential for mutual success and growth. And the danger of what's being taught here is that it's teaching the younger audience that if they get a following on TikTok, they already know more than most companies. And that's just not true. That's what I don't like about what Darman teaches these young people because they make social media king. And that's why you see young kids doing anything and everything to be social media famous because based off what Darman shows you, it can make you millions. It also, it can make you better and superior than most people, no matter how old or how long they've been doing anything in life. I feel really bad. Allison? Allison, wh where, where are you going? I'm sorry. I just, I don't think I belong here. What? Barb hates me. Oh my gosh. What did she say to you? Please, tell me. All I told her was the truth. That her kiddish idea would never work. What idea? <laughs> she wanted to take some silly video of a desk and then tag something someone? I, I don't know. It wasn't silly. It was really good. I was trying to create a TikTok to show the design process of decorating a desk. 
I was going to use that to drive traffic to your website and then push customers to the call to action, which in turn will make your phone start ringing. So you see, I do know a thing or two about marketing. Uh, madam, you simply just said, get people to go to the website, have a call to action, and the phones will start ringing. Uh, see how dumb they make marketing sound? People spend billions marketing every single year in front of your face all the way from when you walk to your local grocery store all the way to when you go to the movie theaters and especially when you're watching an event like a sport you think it comes down to simply getting people to go to a website and then having a call to action and then that's it it's just that simple and phones start ringing and that's what i'm saying they make these tiktok stars or they make social media and when i say they i mean darman they make it seem like it's just so easy to do everything. As long as you can get followers, you know exactly how the whole world works when it comes to marketing. Now I just need to write the caption. Check out Daisy's Designs. Link in bio. <sighs> okay. Posting in three, two, one. Posted. <laughs> That was so good. Amazing. Nice job. Wow, that was really cute. I loved it. Thanks. But I don't hear the phones ringing. Oh, uh, well, it really doesn't work like that. It takes some time. Mm-hmm. That sounds like an excuse to me. The phone, it's ringing. Hello. Thanks for calling Daisy Design Services. How can I help you? Am I happy with my mattress? Who is this? A telemarketer. <laughs> well, that must be so embarrassing for you. I told you her idea wouldn't work. This was a huge waste of time. It, just trust me, okay? It just takes time. Trust you? You're just a child with no experience. Hiring you was a huge mistake. Allison! Allison, please, don't go! It's so confusing what Darman's trying to show here. This is a competitive field, and he shows this 20-year-old TikTok star who can't handle criticism because twice Barb gets to her in one hour to the point where she wants to quit. I don't understand what he's trying to do there. But let me finish off with this. You know that movie Limitless with Robert De Niro and Bradley Cooper? Well, in the end, Robert De Niro is like, hey, experience triumphs intelligence. And at the end of the day, Bradley's like, no, it doesn't. You just have to know what you're doing. In the end, Robert De Niro loses. Just like Barb loses at the end of this one. As you can see, the phones are ringing off the hook. And that's how the story ends. I just wish that Darman would stop pushing these harmful things on people. It's okay to be young and learn because all you're teaching the young people to do is get a following and then you have to listen to no one and that won't get you anywhere. Sabrina, Sabrina, get in here. Uh, why is there another package here for you? Oh, yes, it came in. I've been waiting for this. This is ridiculous. I swear all you do is waste your time on that dumb app just buying useless stuff. Well, for one, these things aren't useless. It's cool stuff I found on TikTok. And two, it's my money. It's not like I'm asking you to pay for it. What's the point of having a job when all you do is waste your time and money on things that you do not need? What are you two arguing about now? Dad's mad that I'm spending my own money that I make. No, I'm frustrated that she's wasting her money on useless things she finds on the internet. All right, all right. Can we just take this down a notch? Sweetheart, maybe you shouldn't spend so much money. At least try to save some of it. And maybe you cannot give her such a hard time. Like she said, it's her money. <laughs> well, are you seriously encouraging her right now? Now, you know when I was her age, my dad made me pitch in for rent, and that taught me financial discipline. You know, maybe that's something that we need to start making her do. <laughs> Come on, Daniel. Are you seriously suggesting that we have our own daughter pay to live with us? 
after seeing all this junk she's been buying? Yeah, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. Okay, we have a girl obsessed with TikTok and her father is disappointed. Once again, like I said earlier, blah, blah, blah. What I really want to get into is what does it mean to be obsessed with TikTok? What does it mean to feel like you can only make it through TikTok? What does it mean to be passionate about TikTok? This video is going to exemplify that very well. What is it? It's a huge spider. Grab me a tissue. <laughs> Relax, Mom. I have the perfect thing for this. What is that? It's a cup of bug. I found it on TikTok. This way we don't have to kill it. Wow. I can't believe all the cool things you found on there. Oh, check this one out. I was going to order it next. And with TikTok shop feature, you can buy it right through the video. Wow, that video has over a million views on it? Yeah, this kind of content's really popular. A lot of people love product reviews. Hey, how did the interviews go? Did you find a job yet? Uh, working on it. So far, no bites. Oh, well, I can't say that I'm surprised. I mean, who's going to hire you when you're going from job to job? I mean, we're going to assume that there's something wrong. Please don't tell me that you bought some more stuff and you don't even have a job yet. I mean, are you even thinking when you're buying these things or has that app completely melted your brain? I mean, you spend so much time on TikTok that I would think that you are getting paid, but instead you're blowing your money away. Wait a sec. That video that you showed me that has over a million views on it, did that girl make money making it? Probably. Lots of people make money on TikTok off of views, commissions. Well, why don't you try it? Oh, yeah, great. That's such a great idea. I mean, why not have her spend so much more time on that thing? Why do you care if this is her job? You just want her to earn money, right? So why not let her try this? I don't know. I've never made videos before. And there are so many people reviewing products already. She's right. She's not going to go anywhere with that. Hey, let's be optimistic. Let me ask you a question. Are you passionate about TikTok? Yeah. It's one of the only things I'm passionate about, which is probably why it's never worked out at any of the other jobs. Well, then, I believe if you follow your passion, it will always lead to success. So I'll give you the little backstory on all that. She ends up working a bunch of jobs. She gets fired from all of them because she always gets distracted by TikTok. Her dad gets upset that she keeps ordering all this stuff. And eventually we lead up to this part right here. And we already know that she's going to be super successful. She makes one video and it immediately blows up. And then she ends up making more money to pay her dad for rent. This video is actually what sparked this entire hour long video. It's because, you know, I started to see the dangerous message behind all of this. I saw this episode, so I went and watched more. And after consuming a significant amount of Darman videos over the past few weeks, I noticed a pattern that raised concerns for me. Darman seems to have a powerful influence on viewers, leading to a widespread belief that quitting one's job, pursuing one's passion and earning $10,000 a month is easily achievable with enough determination. However, and I got to say this, even me watching these videos, I had to remind myself that this ideal may not reflect reality and the likelihood of this success is uncertain. It's important to recognize that pursuing one's passion does not guarantee financial success. Furthermore, passions can change over time, which is a natural part of life involving adaptability, learning and experiencing various things. The concerning aspect of this content lies in its ability to make viewers feel like failures if they don't achieve viral success or make millions while doing what they love. This mindset can be detrimental to self-esteem and well-being. Social media is not the only interest one can pursue. There are numerous other areas that can ignite passion, such as business, healthcare, and even engineering, as exemplified by the girl's love for building Legos earlier. The intention of this video is not to criticize Darman, but rather to inspire and to acknowledge that life presents challenges and failures. Your passion may not yield millions, but it holds the potential to bring happiness and fulfillment. Instead of perceiving a 9 to 5 as a failure, Shift your perspective and focus on the relationships, friends, and family in your life. 
Ultimately, life's true essence lies in human connections. Prioritizing fame and fortune at the cost of missing out on life's meaningful aspects is a choice to be carefully considered. Thank you guys for watching. And once again, this video was not really to tear down Darman. I just want you guys to understand that you can still be successful in life and don't get too caught up in, oh, I got to make millions here or, oh, I got to have this many followers or, oh, if I just make some random video, I'll go viral. I just want to let you know that life is hard, but you can be happy with other things. Don't let social media get to your head and don't think that you can't make it on social media because you absolutely can. But it may be months and years before you get there, but that's okay. Find a passion for something you love that you can do even while working a nine to five. And that's where you can start pushing all your energy towards. Be better in other aspects and then bring those same things that you learn in your other parts of your life. Bring that to your passion. Anyway, I'm gone. Goodbye.